Good morning everybody and once again welcome back to the video. I'm going to be your host mentor for the video where I'll be teaching you incremental data extraction from Postgres using triggers and PySquare. So let's get started with the video. In this video we are going to learn step by step how to extract data from any Postgres. So anytime anything is inserted, anytime anything is updated, let's identify those uh, items that are new, that are changing and let's capture them using a Spark. So uh, in this video, we'll be leveraging triggers and then we're going to pull the data incrementally and basically build uh, data links. So let's get started with the video. Before we begin the project, uh, again, all the steps have been listed on the blog as well. Uh, in case if you miss out on any steps, all the steps are given on the blog section. So now let's begin the project. So step one is basically we need a uh, Postgres. So in the project, you're given a Docker Compose file. And then all you got to do is come inside the file and say docker compose app hyphen hyphen build. This should basically spin up a Postgres container for you. So the next step is we need uh, a Postgres table uh, so that we can play and learn these concepts, right? So on the blog post, the, the commands have been given to you. So what you want to do is you want to come here and copy this, open a tool called PG admin or whatever you like, and then paste this uh, SQL over here. Now click on the run option. And now what this will do is basically inside uh, a schema public, it's going to create a table called sales. Again, right now there is no data. Now we're going to insert a sample data into that. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is again on the blog post, there's a sample insert command given. So simply come here, paste that one in and then execute it. After that, you can check this, select everything from public.sales. And let me make sure if I can, yeah. Here you can see that record has now been inserted. At this point, uh, now what we need to do is we need to set up a trigger. Now what is the logic here, right? Anytime anything is inserted or anytime anything is updated, there will be a column called updated at, so the timestamp will be updated. Now when we are running a job, we're gonna say, okay, give me everything, uh, um, basically, uh, for when it's running for the first time, we're gonna say, hey, give me everything, and we're gonna store the max timestamp on, on, on a checkpoint. Next time when you resume, you say, hey, give me everything from this particular timestamp. That's the key. So now what we're going to do is, again, sharing my screen. Now here is the code to create a trigger. Now I'll walk you over that. Come to PG admin again. Now we're going to come here. So as you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Create or replace function, updated sales, updated at. All it does, it, cre it basically will create a column called updated at, and it's basically going to, uh, as you can see, assign the timestamp to it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna run this one. Uh, let me make sure. Looks like there is a typo over here somewhere. Line one updated at line one updated at probably like this. All right, so that's fixed. All right, so now we have a trigger, right? Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run the Spark template and show you how this can essentially pull data. Okay. Now let's take a look at the code base. Okay. So sharing my screen. Over here, the step one is pretty straightforward. We're just defining imports, uh, nothing uh, new there. Now, over here, you will define all your settings. So here you can see I've defined my JDBC URL. Here is the domain local host. If you're using an AWS Aurora Postgres, simply uh, replace this port 5432 database that I want to connect. This is the, the schema. This is the table name. This is the username. This is the password. So all the things that I, I have to, uh, you know, all the settings I have essentially declared over here. This is the column. This is important. So in the data, in the in that table, there will be a column called updated at. Again, anytime a record is inserted, updated through triggers, that timestamp will change. So that's particular over here, as you can see. Now, 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 again, these are some helper class that I wrote for you, right? Now let, let's see the template in action. So we inserted some data into the Postgres, right? Now I'm going to run the template. Uh, again, I'm going to run the function called main dot show. This is going to return us part data frame. So what I do anticipate is I do anticipate uh, to see the Spark data frame. So for the first time when I run, the checkpoint is not found, right? Which makes sense, right? And once the template is complete, I should see the Spark data frame. Uh, so basically, I will be saying uh, over here, so like everything from. So I'll be seeing this uh, record number one over there, okay? So that's 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 what we're gonna see. So I'm gonna resume the video once the job is complete. So as you can see, right, the template ran, and if you're if you're able to see my screen, we were able to pull invoice ID one, two, three, four, five, six, only one record, which is what we had in Aurora 
uh, Postgres or your Postgres right running locally. Now, if I run the template once again, I should not be seeing any data because since I have already processed the data and in the checkpoint, uh, we have the latest timestamp. So again, when we run the template again, it's gonna make an incremental query. And again, we don't have any data to process. We can verify that by running this uh, again. So here you can see we got a message called checkpoint found and I'm gonna resume once this is complete. As you can see, the job is complete and we don't have any data to process and we get an empty data frame over here. Now let's perform an update. So I will be uh, adding something over here and then I'll save this uh, item, right? So as you can see, now we have added a star star and the timestamp has also changed, right? Now running the template once again, let's see if you are able to identify that uh, new data. So I'm gonna run the template and I'm gonna resume once this is complete. As you can see, we do see that star star, meaning we were able to identify that newly added, uh, or sorry, newly updated uh, item in the database. So as you can see, right, uh, this solution over here, again, if you run the template once again, you're not gonna see data. So I'm gonna run it for one last time and resume once this is complete. And as you can see, uh, running it once again, uh, we don't get any new data, which makes sense. So uh, this solution that I've just showed you is uh, very cost effective, meaning you do not need ex uh, you know, expensive data pipeline. For example, you do not need a Kinesis, you do not need a Kafka or DBCM or AWS DMS, right? Uh, if your goal is simply to pull a couple of tables for probably five, six, seven, whatever that is, this is a very, very easy way uh, to basically pull data at a cost effective way. Um, again, now, um, as I said, right, uh, this method, um, you can leverage this method to also capture deletes as well. Uh, you simply have to maintain uh, one more column uh, where you can say, oh, oh op, op is equal to delete, right? So you can uh, bake that logic into the, into the triggers. So I hope you have enjoyed the video. Now, with that being said, uh, you can use this part data frame and basically perform an absurd on a hoodie transaction data lake. And now, uh, basically your businesses can have uh, more insights, right? And they can query, they can run their analytical queries on, on this uh, transaction data lake. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have enjoyed these labs. These labs, uh, uh, the code base is readily available on, on my blog post. And I, I will be adding the hoodie code from the absurd code uh, shortly. With that being said, if you have any more questions, do let me know. Uh, until then, keep smiling, keep programming, and I'm going to see you in the next video.